So hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining me once again today. I know it's a cliche, but it's the one you've all been waiting for. And it really is this time. And how we have waited for this. The new Airfix 172nd Avro Vulcan B2. Now this aircraft was <laughs> announced at the Telford Scale Model World Show in November 2019. So it's the best part of two years since it was announced. Um, now it was scheduled to actually be on sale in November 2020. So it was an early announcement you could say. But of course with Covid and uh, all the problems with the Suez Canal, which is this is where this has been stuck, along with thousands of others. Uh, I know many of you that are watching this video are probably still waiting for yours. Quite a few have come through, but I, I reckon there's less than half of the ordered kits have actually got to their owners yet, so uh, I, I wasn't one of the first, I was in the second tranche. Um, so I know other people have done reviews on the kit, um, but I've tried to avoid those. Um, I've seen an odd glance, but nothing in depth, I've not watched them properly at all, so I want to try and keep my mind fresh and clean. And, more importantly, we've got everything we need to do a meaningful review today. We've got Airfix's uh, earlier 1990s tool, uh, was, it, was it 83? Was it 1990 I think it was actually, from memory. Uh, we have the actual kit here. We are going to do an actual comparison. Uh, not every sprue, not every piece, but we're going to do the, the key parts and the key areas that are problematic. Yeah, because this, this kit I built, um, I've actually had some compliments about this kit. Uh, this was built some time ago. Oh, uh, 11, 12 years ago, 11 years ago I think it was. So uh, my modelling skills, uh, my airbrushing is not too bad, but my uh, overall my modelling skills weren't that brilliant. So you'll have to bear with me, please don't have a look at this and think, <laughs> he's hopeless, you know. Because <laughs> I have improved since then. I didn't put a wash on it and I didn't do a lot of finishing, but I just wanted to finish it. And the point of the story is, um, our video today is a tale of two Vulcans. Well, that, that has more than one meaning because we have two Vulcans here, but I built two Vulcans. This is the second of two. Uh, the first one, uh, identical kit, Airfix, uh, the one here. Um, it was actually the earlier boxing which showed it over the Falkland Islands, uh, XM607 in this case. This is the later anniversary one for 2010, uh, and I don't, I'd already got the Vulcan maybe one or two years prior, so this was an um, early 2000s boxing that I did. Anyway, I did two back to back. So one, the first one was my late uncle, he's, he's now sadly not long, no longer with us, but um, uh, he lived near the Avro uh, Woodford Air Force, sorry, the Woodford factory uh, of what used to be Avro, became BAE Systems, uh, and he used to have Vulcans flying over his house in Poynton, so I built him this, and he really liked it, you know, and then and I built this one for myself afterwards, and to be honest, it was, in terms of the <laughs> the level of skill, there was no difference. Uh, there were two identical models. But there's lots of issues which we'll get into. Anyway, we won't dwell on this, and we've got a lot to get through today, so I'm going to keep the history, which I do enjoy, I've got to be honest. I enjoy the history part of it, perhaps more than doing the model reviews, if I'm honest, but I'm going to try and compact it all down to make this manageable to watch, otherwise, I think you're going to get bored, and I'll get bored doing it, so we don't want that. Um, but we will just have a very brief history. Um, obviously, the Vulcan was one of the three V-bombers and the most successful because it was the most uh, the most adaptable, most versatile, really. Um, obviously, it was able to do this low-level role that they decided they needed. The Valiant developed its major problems with the rear spar, so they got withdrawn. Uh, they, they converted the Victors mainly to tankers. And then, of course, they, they had the Falklands War. Just as the Vulcan was about to be retired within 12 months of its retirement date, the Falklands War started when um, Argentina invaded the Malvinas uh, and the RAF uh, needed to stop the Argentine Air Force from using the Port Stanley runway so they attacked the runway at Port Stanley. Now I talked about this already at length so I'm not going to go on about it too much but um, there was this extraordinary thing where the Victors did this uh, refuelling plan where they had I think 13 tankers uh, and they had uh, two Vulcans, and one of them had to peel back so they had technical problems. So they ended up with these 13 tankers refueling each other in a relay race, as well as refueling the Vulcan to get the Vulcan there. And they used more fuel than they thought, had lots of problems. Martin Withers, who was the relief uh, pilot uh, of the second Vulcan, became Vulcan 1, one and only. Um, and they did get in there, of course, uh, despite this um, logistical nightmare 
they had this uh, astonishingly complicated please if you haven't seen it please go and see the Victor review where I talk about this in more detail this was the most complex um, air raid ever uh, because they had to find a way to get the 4,000 miles uh, from Ascension Island all the way to the Falklands and back and this was difficult and it was really complicated so complicated that Martin Withers and his and the other pilot didn't understand it and they had to rely on the guidance from the, the tanker guys so they achieved it just they turned back and they weren't even sure they were going to have enough fuel to get back it was very very touch and go Martin Withers had less than 10 minutes fuel I think when he actually got his final refuel after the bombing run and he came in over uh, in the, during the night he came in over Port Stanley runway and he bombed it uh, sort of at 30 degrees and he put one bomb pretty much near the centre of the runway and knocked it out of commission and stopped the Argentines from using their air force against the British Task Force, that's the story. Anyway, moving on. If you want to know more about that, I can strongly recommend this book. This is the book, if you like Vulcans, Vulcan 607. This is the story of the raid on the Falklands. And Jeremy Clarkson has endorsed it. He says at the bottom, I more than enjoyed it. It could have been written especially for me. Just one of these true stories of astonishing grit and determination in the most unlikely of air operations. There's lots of lovely colour photos in there as well. It's available in softback here or hardback. I did have the hardback version. I think I've lent it to somebody. Uh, tells you all about the ascension, shows you the, uh, the logistical operation, talks about the refuelling uh, scenario that I've just spoken of and how difficult it was. There's some great artwork. Tells you all about uh, the challenges and the fact they had this lightning storm which caused a lot of problems when they were trying to refuel. It is a remarkable book and it shows the aftermath of the raid. Um, but it's so um, so typical of a you know like the, the dam busters, this sort of plucky British grit that we sort of have and have this reputation for. Uh, and this raid was very very uh, heroic because it was very very unlikely, very slim chance of them actually getting back and managing to a not get shot down by the anti-aircraft batteries on the Falklands. Uh, from the Argentines uh, and B, the lightning storm which nearly caused many problems. They had malfunctions on uh, one of the victors, all sorts, all sorts of problems. It's it's edge of your seat stuff. It's like a boy's own you know story. It's definitely worth you getting that book. Those of you that have not seen this, perhaps you're across the other side of the world or states or wherever, you'll enjoy this book. You'll find it absolutely gripping. So it comes. Very highly recommend it. So we'll move that off out of the way and we'll just very briefly also talk, very briefly, just uh, there's, there's lots of books on Vulcans. I've got The Vulcan Story by Tim Lemming. Um, it's got lots and lots of photos, but be careful here with my model. Lots and lots of photos about the development of the aircraft when it entered service. Um, the blue steel, development of the blue steel nuclear weapons, uh, ejection systems. It's very, very, uh, very comprehensive. Um, and of course, there was the uh, the Cyrus and Vulcan that exploded in midair, had a structural failure, and that was very sad. Uh, the crew got killed, unfortunately. Um, but then it's got the latest stuff. Obviously, all the development details. Uh, great detail about how it ended its service and got displayed. Um, the training, the flying, and of course, we have to mention some nice pictures. You know great stuff and we have to mention or I, I have to mention once more uh, I do have a connection with aircraft because as I mentioned in the uh, in the recent uh, Lancaster video um, the designer of the Vulcan the original designs were penned again by Roy Chadwick the designer for Avro or AV Row as they were known back in the in the war uh, and Chadwick uh, worked at Woodford and my mum worked worked for him as one of his secretaries uh, and she used to do shorthand and take letters and all sorts of things. <laughs> so this is toward the end of the war, I think it was late 44, early 45. Um, so, a bit of a family connection there, but we won't do on that, because uh, we talked about it already. So, what have we got here? We've got the Airfix finished product, which you might want to take a look at. It's not, as I say, it's not got the best, best modelling skills applied to it, but it was a little bit of a frustrating build, this one. I feel better so you can see it. Bit of a frustrating build, uh, lots of issues, horrible intakes, nasty seams, gaps, bad design throughout, really not a great piece of, uh, of design. And by the way, um, 
It's something you chuckle. Uh, a gentleman pointed out, uh, he was looking at a picture of, one of, of this model that I'd made from an earlier video and I talked about it being one of the, the problem models in the good, the bad and the ugly, which you should definitely check out. But he, he was looking at the blue steel nuclear weapon underneath, as you can see. And he said, he said, wow, you, 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 so you wanted to send a blue steel weapon to, to the Falklands. That's certainly going to make the Argentinians uh, have a bad day. <laughs> yes, and I, I sort of forgot that, didn't I? Uh, perhaps I got a bit carried away. I was trying to end the Falklands War right at the beginning, you know, but anyway, no. But I know we have some Argentinian friends on, so no, don't be offended. We're just, uh, I never actually thought about that. The blue steel that comes with it is probably the best part of the kit, actually. Um, and it fits very nicely, but again, look at all the gaps there are. It's so badly conceived, this kit. Um, the shape and everything like that, the actual look from a distance is really good, but the actual uh, way it goes together is tragic. It's got lots and lots of problems, but we'll get into that in a minute. I'm going to move this out of the way, we'll come back to it at the end. Um, a little wave goodbye, yeah. salute, and we'll put that to the side where it's absolutely safe over there. So, let's get into the kits. Um, we have here the, um, rather strange if I'm honest, the, uh, the box that Airfix did for the, this was the uh, 558, when the Vulcan went back to the skies in, uh, in the 20, 2007, I think it went back to the sky. And, oh, by the way, I have another connection with this aircraft. <laughs> um, we made, or my wife, made a donation uh, to the Vulcans of the Skies Trust. In fact, we used to donate fairly regularly, not, not huge amounts or anything, but we used to try and help them because I've really enjoyed watching this plane be put back in the sky. And it was such a pleasure for so many people around the world to see it fly. Anyway, at the end, you could, um, uh, as a birthday gift, she made a final donation when it was retired in 2015. And we saw it on its farewell tour. She made this final donation, and uh, my name is now on a plaque underneath the wing. Um, it's in a slightly obscure place, pretty much in the middle on port side, I think it is. So my name is actually on the, on the Vulcan itself. Anyway, let's get into this. So, this rather mm, that's questionable airfix thing where they have this horrible habit of showing the finished kit and mixing it with some photos that have been photoshopped. It's a bit of a mess, really. And they also have an end opening box, so this is a bit like a Ravel. I'm curious. Let's have a look. Just don't expect too much from this one. Okay. This is not mine, I don't own it by the way. So I have to be very careful. But it's now then. Yeah, and here we go, it's that really nasty blue plastic that Airfix used in the 90s. Um, interestingly, when I mentioned about building the two identical models, they, they had different plastic. One was grey and one was blue. And I think that's the grey one. I can't quite remember for sure. I think it's grey. Anyway, um, I think we're going to have to open this. I've been given permission to open it. I was kind of hoping to avoid that, but I think we have to, because we have to really see the comparison between the two kits, old and new. So if you just bear with me, I'll have a knife. We will get into this. I'll try and out this bag in a, a sympathetic way I possibly can. Now this is their typical way of fix it, all in one bag. Now hopefully that might have changed, but yeah, this is horrible the way that we do this. Everything gets flashed together, it all gets damaged. Yeah, it's a train wreck really. I'm glad we managed to... Um, I mean, whoops, there's a piece just fell off. Let's loose off the spring. Well that, that bag's in great condition actually, so you almost can't see I've opened it. <laughs> right, so, now this is one of the things they did. They went for this top clamshell style, top and bottom. And it's very, very flashy. Uh, we'll see the details when I zoom in in a second. Clear parts, here's the bottom, you know. Even the forming isn't too good there. I can't remember that on mine, that's strange. And here's the wings, you know, not, not many sprues. All sorts of bits of rogue sprue lying around. Those aren't actually parts, they're just bits of rogue sprue. Look at this, stringy bits of sprue like a hair, almost. That's definitely, uh, I don't think the animal would want that back, so we'll just eliminate that. <coughs> it just doesn't look good. Uh, so, 
we'll have a quick look at the instruction and I won't go into this in much detail as I say, we're, this is looking at the past uh, and we want to look at the future, the present and the future. So um, they did a nice colour colour call out guide which I thought was really excellent, that was, uh, I think that was like a, a retro fit this sheet um, for the 2010 edition. So it's only on one side so it's just Vulcan to the Sky Trust and of course um, it was based at RAF, what used to be RAF Finningley, it's now they call it Doncaster Airport I think it's called now. Um, and uh, and these uh, enthusiasts, including Martin Withers and Co, uh, all worked on this project and uh, they kept it flying for the best part of 10 years. Uh, and in the end they had to be retired, the aircraft, because they couldn't get the parts of the engines, they couldn't get the support from the engine manufacturers. But, well, there we go. Uh, so we've got all sorts of bits here, we've got some decals, which I seem to recall were okay. Yes, they're quite nice, a bit flat perhaps, but that's alright. So, whoops, there we go. Yeah, those are quite nice, aren't they? Uh, you've got the instruments here. Uh, doesn't say who printed them. I think these are Airfixes own actually, but they're pretty decent. Um, no problem. It doesn't have a lot of decals on it anyway, apart from the roundels, of course, and the tail and ceiling. Alright, that's that. So let's just pop that gently back in there. Nice. So far, so good. Uh, so basically, whoops. Yeah, a bit more. So basically, we've got this, uh, yeah, this top and bottom clamshell thing. I mean, they've got a cockpit there with virtually no detail in it whatsoever. You've got these um, top and bottom for the intakes, which are not nicely moulded, as you'll see in a minute. Top and bottom goes together. I think they were trying to avoid a seam down the centre, which I can, I can applaud them for that, but they didn't execute it well. Uh, and of course, you need 30 grams of weight. Two tails going together. Again, all these parts. All in this modular concept, but it has to be a good fit, and it isn't a good fit. It isn't. Again, top and bottom, very simple. You know, there's no interlocking or no great location points at all. And then you just it's very old school, isn't it? And you bring it in together. And look where they've got this wing joint. It's not in a natural position at all. Sort of a third of the way down the wing. And this is when we start with the problems when you have all sorts of seams and. You're going to get, have to get the filler out on this aircraft and you're going to be messing about with it for months. I was lazy. I think I, I think I used some filler on the wings joint, but I think the rest of it I just thought, to hell with it, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Uh, you've got a bomb bay option here where you've got the bomb bay door which is closed. Or you can have it open and you've got your gear going in and... Oh no, sorry, I, I just realised actually. So it's slightly different to my kit, I just realised because it's the... Uh, Vulcan to the sky, there is no blue steel in this and there is no Bombay. So you just have it closed and that's that. Put all your little bits and pieces on if you can and then you've got all your you know, under plates that go between the engines all that stuff. Uh, and then your very non-detailed cockpit gets completely covered up anyway by the, uh, the anti-flash uh, canopy system. That's it really, your pizza head goes on the front. So... <clears throat> I think the best thing to make this interesting in this video, instead of me going through this like it's a new kit, is just put it on one side and then we'll open the new one and we'll then bring them together and have a look and not mix them up obviously <laughs> but we'll have a comparison between the two because I think that's going to be very interesting for you so let me just put that to the side uh, he says safe sorry about being out of shot there we go so I'll stick that on one side now, let's look at the brand new kit. I've not opened this, I haven't seen it, it's completely new to me, so still sealed, just arrived from, from Airfix themselves, Hornby. Uh, and it's got this very thick tape that they use, is it? Oh, there's not much on it. Yeah, it's full. So, first of all, so I'm sort of getting ahead of myself here, eager to get on. So obviously they've got some beautiful artwork here. They've done that really well, haven't they, in fairness. Um, two options, they've got the, uh, the original sort of anti-flash ablative paint, or you've got 617 Squadron, the Dan Busters, which has got the white scheme underneath, camo on the top. And then on the other side, whoops, this thing you have to flip it, uh, a bit more detail here. Let's get you in there. You can see those two schemes in a little bit more, little bit more detail. So it's uh, uh, Scampton wing 
Uh, so this is the nuclear strike force. So it's 27, 83 and 617 squadrons. Uh, and it says the aircraft currently presented, 594, is at the Newark Air Museum. This is the X617 squadron, Dan Busters. I've seen that. Um, I would urge you to have a look in my back catalogue about a year ago, I lied, two years ago in fact, September I think it was, 2019, I went to the New York Air Museum and there's a whole load of photographs from that, including the Vulcan, so have a look at that. Uh, and then the other one that it shows obviously is the Coningsby, um, this is 1963, so it's the early one. Enough of that, let's get into it and see what we actually have. We've waited a long time for this, feels like forever, I mean, you know, the Vulcan's been so bad, there's this story about Airfix refused to retool it for years because they said it kept on selling. Hmm. It's like a vicious circle, isn't it? It's um, chicken or egg. It will keep selling because there's no alternative, really. Nobody did a, a half decent one. So it's the only option that you really have. Ooh. Here we go, here we go. And. <laughs> I'm trouble here. There we go. Right. You ready? Finally, the long way is over. Okay. Right. Urgently. We've got... Okay, there are multiple bags. Things are looking good, aren't they? So let's make sure we don't get these two kits mixed up. I don't think you'd be, don't think you'd be able to mix them up though, because they're so different. We've got separate bags for the blue steel weapon. And the screw there, and the screw there. Okay, there's lots of separate bags. Lots and lots of bags. And they're all in different bags. So we'll open them, and we'll see everything. Move the box away, and put the instructions down there. Okay. The instructions. Hopefully, some decals. Yes, we've got the decals. Let's have a look at these first. So, oh, straight away they look so much more crisper and more modern. Look at this. Really nice, like a satiny finish to them. Uh, we've got the Foxes, that's 12 Squadron. Um, uh, which of course ended up having Buccaneers and 12 Squadron. Uh, these guys, uh, I lived just down the road from Honington in the 70s, early 70s. So I'm quite used to that insignia. Um, we've got by the way, it doesn't say who's printed it. I'm pretty sure it's cartographed. It doesn't actually say that, interestingly. How interesting. Normally on the FX now, they do say printed by cartograph. Does it tell us on the... I'm interested. Does it tell us? Made in India. Made in India. Okay. Doesn't say. Not that I can spot, anyway. Um, but you've got quite a few stencils, not excessive though, uh, on the Vulcan, it's not too bad I suppose. But yeah, there's plenty of little hook points and uh, all that sort of stuff. You've got your 27 Squadron, your old style roundels. When I say old style, I mean the uh, high vis roundels, old style, or low vis roundels, old style, for the nuclear white strike version. Looks very nice, nothing wrong with those, they certainly look uh, up to the mark, very modern. And then we have got a oh, pull-out sheet, which I need to zoom you out for. So, we've got the Scampton wing of the, uh, the three squadrons that I mentioned that were uh, the strike squadrons in the sort of 19, mid-60s. Shows your blue steel nuclear weapon there. Says no. It was a switch to low level in the mid 60s. The Vulcans were repainted in the glossy camouflage finish, medium sea grey and dark green with white undersides. Yeah, of course. So there you go. As I've talked about in my previous videos, it's when they decided to make them. Uh, they were worried about the anti aircraft uh, surface air missiles, so they decided they needed to go low. And that's that's when you know the Valiant got ruled out. Here's the earlier version in 63. Uh, with the white finish, this is more to the original spec. Uh, and this has got, it seems like it's got conventional bombs. Doesn't show the blue steel there, interestingly. I thought it'd be the way around. But anyway, then we've got the stencil data. And plenty of it. Yes, it looks quite a few suddenly now, doesn't it? Maybe I was wrong about it. there aren't many. There's 100 and 142. Mm, it's quite a lot. <laughs> That's 
quite a few. Other side. Okay, so there's actually different stencils on the different two versions. Okay, fair enough. Very nicely done. And then we're into the instructions. Now, this is Airfix's new style where we have this very good clarity and it draws your attention to things. And it says here, uh, do not cement parts together when it says it's red. Do not cement parts together that are red. Okay. Interesting. I hadn't noticed that before. I thought we were just drawing your attention to the parts. So we start off building quite a detailed uh, internal uh, cockpit. And it's the front area for the pilot and stroke navigator. Um, then you put your injection seats in and your instrument. Uh, they've got these little yokes in the Vulcan. It doesn't have a stick in the normal sense. It's like a hydraulic stick, push-pull, left-right. There's none of this yanking back and forth, it just slides. Um, so you do that as the initial thing, then you put your ejector seats in and you build up your sides. And remember in the Vulcan it's very quite a cramped, dark, small place. Not a lot of room, very claustrophobic. Uh, yeah, not a, not a nice place to spend, what was it, eight hours? Was it, was it eight hours or twelve hours that they spent on the Falklands Road? It was a long time anyway. I think it may have been 12. And uh, they were saying that they used to get a crick neck because um, the, the, the sides of the uh, aircraft are so tight that you actually have your head slightly canted over as the pilot on the right seat. It's mm, not ideal. <laughs> Alright for an hour or two, but after that probably gets a bit of a problem. Then here we get into the building up of the... You've got lots of details. I don't think you're going to see a lot of this because it's so small and the windows are so tiny. They'll be obscure, I'm sure. But you've got a little ladder, crew access ladder for climbing up to the, the main deck. Then you've got the, um, the targeting guy, the bomb, um, uh, weapons officer uh, and the engineer who sit in these three here. And then you're building up your nose cone. Now this is very interesting because what Airfix seem to have done is it's like they've created for the look of it. I don't think that's the exterior. I think they've created like a cell in which you put your weight. So you put your lead shot or whatever you use to make sure make sure it's 40 grams um, because you don't want a tail sitting Vulcan. So they've created like a cell with a bulkhead on the front of it. So you don't have this problem of having lead shot starts running around inside your model. Uh, that could be a real nightmare. Uh, yes, and believe me, I've got a couple like that. I think the Mirage has still got lead shot flying around inside it. If you pick it up, it rattles, you know. Not ideal, especially if you're at a show or something. <laughs> anyway, we digress. So you build your cell, and then you're going to, as you can see here, you're going to encase that in the actual outer uh, nose section here and here. And you've got the option of having the crew door underneath open or closed. And of course, on this, they have that little ladder, don't they? Um, and you've got two options for the nose cone, the nose tip. That's that's quite good. Okay. And you put it in your. Uh, it's like a bomb aimer's window, isn't it? Here. View window. Then we get into start getting into the meat and potatoes of the kit. So you've got the option to cut away an area if you're going to have the blue steel nuclear weapon. And you've got these kind of formers and spars you're going to build up. Um, bulkheads, formers and spars. And they're going to create quite a, quite a complicated uh, sort of setup compared to the other kit, which has got nothing like this. It's just outers that are just shells that are stuck together, if you're lucky. But with this, you're actually building like an internal framework for the wings to go on. And you've got these... Uh, sort of uh, spars down the spine on around which the actual bodywork will form it. It's quite complicated. I don't know if it's going to go together, okay. Yeah, you see there, you've, you've then got these uh, wing spars going on that uh, the wings are going to fit onto, I guess. Which means you should have a very secure sort of wing uh, fixing system, which is what you want. And then here you've got uh, bits you need to cut away for the blue steel again. You're creating space for the blue steel, so yeah, I'm surprised you have to cut it. That's a bit, hmm, a bit disappointing. I would have thought they could have done, you know, a system where that was incorporated without having to get the file or the, the saw out. But anyway, there we go. 
cut the areas and you've got a few holes to drill. Ethics are devils for this, they seem to want you to drill lots of holes instead of just moulding them because it's probably easier for you to drill a, a clean hole than them to mould one. Anyway, Bombay doors open, obviously you've got this uh, issue with the Bombay doors. Now we actually get to see the wing here for the first time. Um, and it does look as though, you see this, it looks here, as though it's got like a tab to like click into it to make sure it locates, which I hope is right. Because the problem with the other model was the wings were just such a bad concept, they were just, it was crude, beyond belief really. So here it looks like you're going to choose which type of Bombay and then you, you obviously put it in. That's the blue steel at the start, and this is the non-blue steel conventional bomb door. Then you've got this framework, which basically mounts it then into this uh, lower wing. It's very clear, I like the instructions. It's, it's, it's easy to understand what they're trying to convey, which is uh, better than we've got from the Chinese manufacturers. See my other previous videos over the last couple of weeks. Like the Lancaster and uh, what was the other one? The, uh, Bobcat, you know, incomprehensible instructions. Anyway, yeah, so you're then put, attaching this lot to the lower wing and it's telling you, it's also got some fairly uh, obvious locating points here, which looks good. Then you're going to put your nose gear door on and build the bay for the nose gear. And that, then you're building the main wheel uh, well bays. Plenty of detail there, there's quite a lot of steps involved. Now, now we've got templates. Cut out the templates and mark the front edge of the white painted it. Oh right, so we've got painting templates now. That's a good idea. That's great. You've got to cut them out. Okay. <laughs> why, why couldn't they give me a mask set though? I'm not trying to be critical here because it's obviously a good idea, but a mask set would have been an even better idea, wouldn't it? But anyway. So you put these templates in and then it's so that you end up getting the white paint um, into the right places at the lip of the intakes. Then you're building up your intakes, let's hope there's no eject pins, but we'll see. Intakes for the engines here. And you've got your engine um, fan blades at the front. And then you're, oh, it's quite complicated, isn't it? So here you're now putting in um, these units, if you like, of the intakes and engine. You've got a couple of windows going in there. and. And I was right, but you can actually see here, let me make this out, that this has got like a, a slot, um, a plug and slot sort of system to interlock the wings to, to give you a good join, hopefully. Depends on how it goes. And then you bring the top and the bottom wing together. Then you bring your nose section on. Did, did we put the canopy on? I don't remember the canopy. Have I missed something? Is that... Just telling you how it will go, I'm sure that's not done yet, but anyway. Uh, then you've got this um, the sort of deflector um, air fence here, which directs the air into the engine in the right way and uh, duts it and flow modifies it, a bit like a Formula One car. Then you've got your tail cone coming up, which is the, where the parachute deploys from, of course. And then we've got our engine jet pipes at the back. Um, doesn't have afterburner the Vulcan? Well, it must do because it's Olympus. I don't think they're obvious, they're sort of internal within the pipe. So it doesn't have opening and closing um, jet nozzles, I don't think. Not, not as visible at the back, anyway. And then you've got, it's quite, again, it's quite complicated the system of mounting your jet nozzles, jet pipes at the back, going in there. Oops, they've thought it through though, there's obviously a lot of design gone into this. Uh, tells you exactly which way up they should be, so there's all sorts of locators so you can't make a mistake. Uh, it's quite a lot of all just in the engines. On the other one it's just a, shape, a bit of shaping of the back end of the trailing edge basically of the wing and that was it. There's no jet pipe or anything. So that's a big improvement. Uh, and then you've got your various vents and ducts going in underneath. You've got these, um, these plates that go between the two engines uh, radio aerials and things that go on there as well. Well, sorry, not radio aerials, they're um, the bleed exhausts, aren't they, from the engine. Uh, like bleed valve pipes, like a like an APU type uh, bleed off pipe. Then we've got our tail going on, T tip of the tail first, then the main tail. 
and that goes in a fairly conventional way but it looks like it's got multiple uh, little plugs to, to plug in so hopefully that'll be a nice fit and we've got a rudder which you didn't get on the other plane as well and we've got flaps Ooh, flaps flapperons elevons and flaps flap flapperons sorry flapperons i was right the first time and then we've got the elevon elevons elevators elevons here and you've got your trailing edge uh, for the control surface linkages there. That's very nice. Oops, compared to it too much. Um, uh, then we've got the gear going in, gear legs, very meaty gear. Uh, quite why they didn't put gear like this on the TSR2, I'll never know. That was the one thing on that plane that was a bit, a bit crazy. You know, th this was a sturdy, simple system which they already had. They could have copied it or scaled it down a little bit. Maybe just had a single axle, do you know what I mean? Just had a single axle with slightly bigger tyres, like, like they did on uh, the Jaguar, you know. And then you've got your nose leg going in, main legs going on, sorry, the other way around, main legs. Are... Then you've got the hydraulic actuators for the doors here. Looks really detailed, that looks really good. And then you've got your main um, front nose leg, I should say, going in at the front. Put it in the nose, actuator arms again, lots of great detail here, I've thought of everything. And then you've got your bombs, finally. So it's a conventional bomb load, I think it carries 21 bombs from memory. Is that right? 21? Twenty-two, close. <laughs> and you've got your, your doors going on. Open doors. And I love these diagrams, they're nice and clear, aren't they? If only the Chinese could just look at this kit and take note and think, yeah, okay, we don't want to put lots of English in the instructions, but we need to make it clear, and this is visually clear. It doesn't matter what language you speak, the diagrams say, you know, they, every picture tells a story, don't it? <laughs> As the old song says. So you're putting in your, you've got your, um, sorry, air brakes here, the underwing air brakes, air fences, I think they call them, and then you've got your blue steel nuclear weapon, a bit scary, but there we go. Um, complete with a nice tail cone for the uh, the exhaust pipe because obviously it's a rocket powered it doesn't just glide this is rocket powered it's a guided weapon and then finally that goes in there you can have it uh, with the fin folded up and then run to the back and then you've just got all the little uh, vents and little windows and then you've got this crew ladder which looks very good compared to the old one that's nice so you've got a crew ladder you've got all this detail inside uh, and then you've got your various pita heads and aerials and, and here we've got the rather nice uh, main air brakes on top of the wing which there are four and finally the pita head and a couple of aerials going on I definitely missed the canopy, was I not paying attention? Where is that done? Oh it's there, it's, yeah, I was too busy looking at the nose sections now of course this canopy, you have to bear in mind is you won't see it like that, it's just a few little windows, you've got to mask it You've got plenty of masking to do with that one. Doesn't mention anything about masking. Is there a mask there? There isn't, is there? Okay. Hmm. <clears throat> one or two major steps forward there, not only in the detail and the quality of the moulding. He says, crossing his fingers because I haven't seen it yet. But um, some of the concept is much better. But it's little things like mask set. Why can't they have a mask set here, fix? That's, you know, Edward did it so well, don't they? Even Tammy, I do it. It's not a cheap model, this is £60. It's um I think they could I think they could afford to give us a mask set. So anyway, let's have a look. What we got. So, pop that down there, it's safe, and let's look. The moment you've really been waiting for. Let's look at the plastic and see if it's any good. Uh start really, let me chop it. And we're gonna open these. I can be a bit more brutal. This is my kit, so we'll be brutal with this one. Oops, he said. Chop my fingers off that. It would be too brutal. Okay. First one then. The big sprues, aren't they massive? They're huge. Now I'm gonna try not to spend out this repacking stuff here. So get over there, let you see that. Now this is where I run out of space and get into trouble, so please bear with me. It's just a lot of stuff to see here. Right. Okay, so we've got the bomb bay. And that looks really nice. Look at that, it's got like vents here. You've got your intake uh, engine fan blades. 
then you've got this uh, all these various uh, doors here uh, gear doors internal cockpit parts these rather nifty looking very nicely molded uh, these are the uh, the intakes for the engines, it's the, like the splitter which splits the air, top and bottom. I think they're going vertically, if memory serves. So one engine that side, one engine that side. Then we've got all these um, ribbed, uh, sorry, spars and uh, parts that form the framework on which the wings are mounted. More of them here. I've zoomed a little bit too much. There we go. Better. Then you've got this. Um, this big spar that goes across where the engines are at the back and we've got the intakes here for the engines if I can get my camera to get into the right position I'm not doing a job of Let's zoom out a little bit there we go, intakes now they're pretty nice because there's no eject pin marks at all on those that's really really clean looking you've got this have to zoom you out because this is so massive. You've got this um, big spar that has the engine numbers on it as well, so that's like it's got like a bulkhead at the back with framework on it. It's nice, it's very, very nice. Yep, I like that. So far, nothing, nothing's worrying me. Looking good. Number two, here, yeah, bombs, I think. Oh, it's quite nice to go cut them out. I'm looking for the rather murky bag. <laughs> that one. <clears throat> now then, the nose section this is. I like the way they've zoned it off as well, it's not just random, it's they've clearly thought it out. Take a look at the just bear with me one second. I think I've got to improve the image for you. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move this out of the way. So you'll have to bear with me as I turn away. Right, now then, big sprue, it's kind of two sprues really that are sort of connected. So, what we got? We've got our bombs. They are really nice, aren't they? All formed in one piece. Um, this uh, FX plastic, by the way, it is this kind of a slightly, it's actually a very similar colour to the old kit. Old kit's here. It's not. It's not that different. We'll do this comparison properly in a minute. I'm just going to do an initial look at it and then we'll get side by side. Um, but this, it's, a, it's quite a nice, it's a nice hard feeling plastic. It's not that usual plasticine type stuff, which I really don't like. No. Anyway, let's have a closer look. There's the, uh, the little window under the nose. Beautifully formed, this. Very nice. There's these two options for your nose itself. Then we've got your pilot seats, they've got ejector seats, they've actually got the take a bit better. You can actually see we've got the uh, the belts are moulded in there. That's great. And we've got the crew, uh, sorry, the engineer seats behind. You've got this little internal whoops, little internal ladder here, which is cool. And it all looks really nice, you know, the um, sort of moulding quality is the nose. It looks pretty good. Can't fault it really. No flash, not like the other one. <laughs> we'll come to that in a second. And then you've got, I, I sort of skipped over, you've got the Bombay doors here. Let's just skip out a bit. The Bombay doors here, open or the closed version. So that's nice. Again, nice sprue. No flash, nothing nasty. Ejector pins. Nope, none where I don't think they're going to be a problem. Don't think so. Next. Anyway, let's see what the heck's going on. I'll tell you something, uh, one of the criticisms there, which I'm not on the go in there, but a um, few people do this actually. I mean, look at the size of this bag compared to the sprue that's in it. Yeah? The bag is literally 50% too big. It's 50% too big, isn't it? Basically. I don't understand what that's all about. Why? And the other thing they do is they have this habit of uh, a couple of other gentlemen were pointing this out in the comments on one of the other videos. And this guy said, "Peter, why do they insist on putting them in these massive boxes so everything rattles around? It's all very well, you know. You look at that uh, Hong Kong model Lancaster. One thing that was great about that was the 
packaged it in the box beautifully. There's no excessive motion. It's all just motionless inside. Right size box. Right size bags. Spot on. Right. This is the back end there. I'm running out of space. <laughs> this is the back end of the plane. It's slightly strange the way they've done this sprue, which is sort of almost hanging off. This is the one that's got all the air brakes on it and the air fences. And that looks really nice. All the little aerials are beautiful actually, look at that. The actual uh, little various aerials and pitot heads and things. And sensors. Look at these. They've moulded those really, really well. Ooh, yes I like that. Then, I think, yeah. Then we're back onto the um, the tail end of the plane, so you've got all your jet pipes. Look at all this. There's a lot of parts here. The jet pipes. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at them all. This is, you're going to have to take your time. There's a real danger of getting... These are, oh. Sorry, I'm getting a bit negative here. I don't wish to be grumpy about this, but if you have split parts where you have you know, a jet pipe and it's split into three parts, you're always going to get loads of seams and it just creates problems. Why couldn't they mould that in one? I don't get that really. Anyway, the actual quality of the moulding is very nice. It's really excellent actually. There's no flash or short shots or errors on it that I can see. Bring you in on this one. So we've got the wheels here. So, there's a lot of them of course, <laughs> and all your little actuators. And it just looks like the quality of the actual moulds are really, really excellent, in fairness. Can't see a problem with any of that. Very, very nicely. Crisp. Crew ladder's nice. There you've got your hatch for the crew. Yeah, it does, it looks very nice. Another good sprue. Let's move on. And oh, well, the bag is a bit too big. Let me see. Uh -huh. Right. Whoops. Yeah, that, that was a plastic from the 90s. Sounds horrible. <laughs> Right, tails. Tails and flaps. I like the way they've put things logically together. So you've got your tails and your rudders and your flaps all on one sprue here. That's really, really nice. So, let's have a look. Um, it's, it's got a lovely finish to it at the moment. It's got a real nice sort of satin sheen. I think it'll take paint pretty well, to be fair. And you've got all your flaperons and your ailerons here. here. And nicely finished, to be honest. No ejector pin marks. Really good. It's night and day. I mean, on the other key, you, know, you just get this horrible, uh, horrible great wing without any option for having any elevators or flaperons or anything else. So that's very different. You've got your um, splitter plates where they have the exhaust pipes hidden underneath aerodynamic plate this really just to keep the airflow uh, even on the gap between the engines um, it's lovely nice panel line detail as well with the uh, those flaperons smashing very good now let's have a look at the blue steel nuke Made a bit of a mess. There we are. Oh, yes, that's nice. Yes, I moulded that very nicely. And look at the way they've got the uh, the bay for it, especially shaped bay. There's a lot more detail on this than there is on the other Vulcan. We'll, we'll have a look in a minute and compare. Here you've got your tail cone, which is where the parachute deploys from. Here. And a couple of vents and obviously all the, the fins for the blue steel nuke. Again, good panel line detail on there. The little trims and the uh, elevators. 
for the weapon. It's beautifully formed. I mean, look how nice that point is there. It's very sharply done, isn't it? It's very nice, that. Very, very nice. Put that one over there. Now, I think we need to do the big parts here. The wings. Now, I think we need to zoom out for this for sure. This is a big old beastie. It's not small, this is it. Wow. And it's. The thing that's striking me is that the total lack of flash, which I'm just programmed to expect on these kind of kits from Airfix. But they really are getting it right now. Really good, you know. Huge improvement, isn't it? Compared to what we used to. Come back to that in Now then. This is when we need to get the two out and to compare. It's comparison time, but old versus new. This is really where it's going to matter. So, what? Well, it's very, very, very fragile on the sprues that, whereas this is a really meaty sprue. Look at the panel line differences in the detail there. Good gracious, it's night and day. Way exceeds what you'd expect. So you can zoom in a bit better without going too far. So, old here, new here. Let's just have a look. Can you get that? I mean, the, the old one is very glossy, nasty sort of plastic, but putting that aside, look at the lack of detail there is on the actual wings. Whereas here, we've got every line is visible. And obviously we've got the option of all the elevons and the flap rounds, which you don't have on the other as well. Um, there's no comparison, is there really? It just makes this look super crude, which it kind of was. Um, but as I said, the shape was okay on the old one. There's nothing wrong with the shape, it's just the finish and the detail is just not there. So... I mean, the things like these, uh, the air brakes, which we've actually got to build up. Well, on the original, it doesn't, it's not on this part, actually, but on the original, you've just got, like, uh, some panel lines. That's it. There's no actual air brake at all. That looks great, doesn't it? And I like this, um, this system that they've obviously got where you're going to have, like, a plug and pin, or slot and, slot and die, you could call it, here. It's going to slot in. Look on the other side, you can see the slot. So that, this slots into here. And the same happens at the front. Where this slots into here. Recessed slot. And again on the other side, they've done it up the opposite sides as well. So this one slots into here. Brilliant. It's a good sprue as well. It's proper strong as that. And again, they're trying to avoid joins, so look at the way they've formed the bulkhead here, already formed on one side, and the one just sits on the top on a lip. So you should avoid any really nasty joins there. That is fabulous. And then here, <coughs> the underside, so let's swap to the underneath. I mean, sorry, just going back to the old kit here. Look at those horrible intakes that will come in flash. And covered in ejector pins, can you see them? Oh, absolutely foul. So that's what we've got away from. And we've moved over to something that's a little bit more of this century, you might say, in terms of the way it's been manufactured. So let's have a look at the under wings. This is the old kit. So this is the old. Now it has got more panel line detail. This is what's a bit strange. They've got lots of panel line detail underneath, but they've got none on the top in that area, in the middle of the wing. Top's just plain, as you saw. Kind of weird, isn't it? So here's the new one. So the improvement is uh, strong, but it's not as absolutely outstandingly defined because they have made a bit more effort with the old kit. How bizarre that they made effort on the underside like that but none at all on the top. That is very curious, I think. So let me zoom you in a bit more here. Anyhow, that's it. 
Hmm. Yes, it's strange, isn't it? But the plastic is so much nicer, you know, to work with. I suspect it will be as well. And again, they had this very crude tail on the original one, which all just one piece, you know, and it didn't have much of a locating point. It just sat in a in a pool of gaps, <laughs> you might say. Yeah. And again, if you look at the undercarriage of the old kit, it's very crude looking and it's incredibly flashy, isn't it? When you saw that new kit a moment ago, it was so beautifully moulded. Look at the flash here. Look at that. <laughs> that's not nice. Hmm. So that's uh, a massive improvement, as you'd expect, really. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to... So, um, yeah, so that underside is, is just nicely done. It just strikes me as a little bit softly moulded in some respects. On the underside, I don't know what, it seems um, the gaps look a bit more, less defined, a bit more V-shaped, if you know what I mean. Uh, but overall, I like this detail here in London. The concept of thought it through, you know, how is it going to go together? How are we going to avoid any seams that we don't want or need? They've done it very well. Okay. I'm trying not to stir it in. I'm sure we've got some more. Um, I'm looking for the clear parts. Oh, there they are. They're hiding in this bag. Hiding right at the bottom of this one. Okay, clear parts. Lots of bags. It's not, it's not confusing though, is it? Because if there's lots of bags, they all belong to the new one. There's only one nasty bag for the old one. <laughs> um, let's have a look at this and get it out and a proper look. Okay. Here we go. Hmm, okay, it's... Um, not quite as uh, super clear as I expected, if I'm honest. It's a little bit of distortion as well that I wasn't expecting, if I'm honest. And it doesn't really matter, of course, because A, 90% of this canopy is going to be painted and masked. And so therefore you're not going to see. But maybe that's deliberate then. You know, maybe they deliberately thought, well, we don't need to worry too much. You're only going to see through these little ones at the front and the two little portholes at the side here. The rest of it will just be painted. And you've got your glass for your viewing window here. And the rest is just lights, isn't it? There's not a lot to it really, if we're honest. But that is fine, and the, the shape looks good, and the, they've got the little windscreen wipers moulded in, that looks quite nice, doesn't it? No problems, no problems. So, um, to pop that back, and then I think, what I think we'll then do is, before we finish, I'm just going to just pick on the old kit, you know, a bit unfairly perhaps. But pick on the things that were really bad, you know, and then focus on just comparing it to the new ones. Obviously you had this very silly shaping where they got it all in one piece, went for a top and bottom joiner. I got a reasonable join on that, actually. But this, this joining of the wings is total disaster. I mean, look at the, the crudeness of the way that they've designed this back in the 90s. It's not nice, is it? You know, you've just got a couple of slots. They're very ill-defined. They're not the tiny as well. There's not enough contact area. So you end up with a great big seam all the way down here you're going to have to fill. And it's not what you want. Same at the back here. Um, nicely shaped and everything, but you end up with gaps here and gaps here and gaps everywhere. And you're going to have to fill them all, do a bit of rescribing, and the plastic's not a very nice plastic either, I have to say. It's quite a hard plastic, it's not like the stuff from the 19... I was, sorry, from the, from the 2000s I was going to say. The, the, the stuff they did between about 2005 and 2012, very soft stuff. This is quite hard, so in that respect it's okay, but 
But look how crude. This is this is the jet pipes that I mentioned when we're looking at the new model. Look at the jet pipes. That's it. That's the opening for the jet pipes. There's no other detail whatsoever. That is it. So when you look on the other side, underneath, and again, that's just it. That's the jet pipe. Um, nasty, to be honest. Nasty. So it's a bit of a that blue steel is desperately wanting to leave the spruce. I'm going to have to be a little bit careful here. Um, I think the primary areas where you're going to notice big differences are the wing join and the intakes. I think uh, because those are uh, and those are, and the exit pipes I've just mentioned for the jet pipes because those are the three areas that were just dire on this original kit. Really, really nasty. Anyway, I think we've been on long enough. Um, Try to keep it short as a course, considering what I've got a lot, lot to look at. Um, it's night and day, as we always expected it would be. Um, I've not built it yet. I've heard one or two people are building them at the moment. One or two little issues, perhaps the fits. Uh, was it to do with the intakes? I can't remember now. One or two little issues, but nothing major. So I'm going to bring back the actual um, finished model and the box for the new one. How about And we will give our final verdict. <laughs> If I can just get all these parts, don't mix them up, whatever you do, don't mix them up. Otherwise my friend who lent me this kit's going to get a real bargain back, he's going to get a new one. <laughs> oh, we don't want that. I don't want to end up with another, yet another third old airfix book. Right, so, I'm going to pop that there, for my cleaner to make it stand up for us. Have we got it? Yes, we got it. So we're going to get the actual one of the original. And we're going to have a bit of a verdict, I think. Didn't tell that we didn't need to. Right, so, thank you for bearing with me. Hope you found it interesting. Um, I'm just going to zoom in on a couple of points that just to reconfirm where, where the problems are on this original kit, so um, there's no doubt about it. And they are, these are really nasty, in oops, Bit more zoom, I think. <sighs> These really nasty intakes, which they did so badly, uh, very badly formed, didn't join well. You've got a horrible lip. Can you see the lip in here? Really nasty. Very, very bad. And then you've got these horrible, I mean, I, I, I could have filled these and made much more effort, but I didn't, but it was just off putting, and I'd already done one. Uh, and I was running out of patience with it. I ended up with a fairly decent kit, you know. It looks nice, everybody admires it, to be honest. Um, probably more than it deserves, but yeah, it came out okay. But, you know, your engine pipes, I mean, look at that. Crude isn't the word, is it, really? That's it. That's your lot. No detail at all. And then you've got all these rather nasty joins that we spoke of at the back. You've got no flaperons or ailerons, they're just all moulded as one piece. Uh, yeah, I mean look at, I didn't do a great job on now, but I was working with such a poor kit really. Look at the join, you know, the top and bottom join is so evident there, isn't it, the side view. Yeah. See on this side? I'm sure about the same, yeah, same. So, a bit nasty, <laughs> a bit nasty. So that's the old Airfix Vulcan, old tool. This is the new tool, and I have to say, um, I haven't built it, so everything I'm saying is purely based on what we've seen. It looks phenomenal, really. I think they've made a major leap forward, you know, some of the things where, and they've got things like templates, they're thinking about how to help you to paint, so you get the painting right around the, the intakes, um, the interlocking of the wings to try and avoid, to make it strong and to give you a good, join where you've got you're adding strength by having more contact area and hopefully avoiding a nasty seam down the middle um, you know the, 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 they've got a nose section modular nose section this time as well as a modular tail section but you can tell the fit's going to be a lot better than what we've experienced before I'm not sure that they needed to go so OTT what was it 60 quid maybe they could have made that a five pound shaper if they would not had so much detail in the cockpit which we're not going to see but anyway in summary it's a quantum leap forward. The, the plastic quality is better, the concept is better, the engineering is better, and the, 
there's no flash, it looks really really nice and it's going to make you a beautiful Vulcan. And I'm sure in the next week or two you're going to see people having actually finished theirs already. <laughs> I haven't got room for another one frankly at the moment, but um, I may even sell this one, I don't know yet. But it's a beautiful kit, um, night and day over the old one. I mean it just looks crude and nasty really. Great from a distance, don't get close. <laughs> so in summary, I'm going to give it, any criticisms of it? Um, some of the instructions I thought I'd like to have a bit more, you know, photographic stuff, a little bit more experience, especially at 60 pound. So I'd like to see a little bit more of the supporting data. Um, don't have to go crazy on it, but you know, a couple of photographs, a little bit of a history of the Vulcan on a separate sheet, perhaps that'd be nice, you know. Um, and also a masking set um, and some uh, some more crew figures would have been good as well. Maybe a couple of standing crew figures. You can make a diorama standing next to the ladder. They're not doing this, are they, any of them? And it sort of annoys me, but oh, I don't want to pick on ethics because they've done a brilliant job here, for sure. So I'm going to give it 9.5 out of 10. I'm not quite going to go to 10. It's not Wing Not Wings, you know, or SWS Sokimura, but it's a very, very, I was going to say a valiant effort, but it's a Vulcan. <laughs> but it's a very, very worthwhile, excellent kit, that, and I think that they've done a great job, so... Almost 10 out of 10. Just, just, just clean up one or two things and, um, you know, get your bags the right size, give us a masking set and it'd be 10 out of 10. But in terms of the actual product and the way it's been produced and the, the plastic is 10 out of 10. Overall, that's it. Nine and a half. Hope you enjoyed the video. Give me 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up. Um, I know it's been a long time coming uh, and I'm not the first person to review this, but uh, it, it's kind of exceeded my expectations. I think it's yeah, it, it looks really nice. I think it's a very desirable kit, so I wouldn't hesitate going out and buy it. Just try and shop around and get a good price. But they're still in short supply, so that's probably not going to happen. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do join us and subscribe. And if you have, don't forget to ding the notification bell, because if you do that, you'll get early warning as soon as I upload the next video. And uh, in the meantime, until next time, thank you very much for joining me in the Tale of Two Vulcans. Uh, and I hope we can have something interesting and enjoyable in the not too distant future for your entertainment. In the meantime, look after yourselves, take care, and bye for now.